So how do you install a program that's not part of the FreeDOS distribution? Or maybe you've got a program you've downloaded that is an update to a program from the FreeDOS distribution. How do you get that installed in your system if you can't use FD impuls? Well, I'm going to show you a quick way that you could install those programs without using FD impuls. So the great thing about FreeDOS, really like any DOS, is that DOS is very simple. There's no concept of like shared libraries or things like that you have on other operating systems like Linux or maybe Windows. Uh, and so that means that for the most part, paths aren't really a problem. So you can actually install stuff and put it really anywhere that you want. So over here, I've downloaded a copy of uh, the updated version of Edlin. So if I go into my temp directory, that's where I've got it. You can see there's uh, Edlin 2.19. So thanks, uh, Gregory Peach, for uh, that new updated version of Edlin. And so if you if you see if I run the current version of Edlin on my system, uh, and that's the Edlin 16 for the 16-bit version, uh, you can see it's 2.18. Well, I want to install the new 2.19 version. How do I do that? Well, um, maybe you just want to do uh, FD impulse, right? So FD impulse to uh, maybe... Uh, install that package of uh, Edlin uh, 219, but oh, that's an invalid parameter. You can't actually do that. If you actually go into FD impulse, uh, you can see that there's no way to like install another package that was downloaded separately. And that's because what you've downloaded separately may or may not actually be a package. So if I get out of uh, FD impulse, let's actually look at what's inside this zip file. Well, I've got two files here. One is uh, Edlin uh, 219, and you can see that that one actually is the source code. So if I use unzip, so these package files are really just zip files. And actually, these aren't even package files. These are literally the zip files I downloaded off the website. If I do an unzip-l to look at inside what's inside that zip file, so dash l is going to list the contents of my zip file. So Edlin 219, well, that's just a bunch of source code. That's actually the, literally the source code to Edlin 219. No, uh, no executable in that one. So uh, if you notice on the website, uh, I also compile the version of Edlin 219, and that's in this uh, e-219exe. Uh, so if I do an unzip-l on that file, you can see that uh, I've got my edlin.exe and I also have the original make file. All right, so how do I get that installed on my system? Well, paths don't matter. So I can actually just unzip uh, E219 and then grab the file edlin.exe. Uh, now that's extracted the, uh, the new edlin file and so I can type uh, just edlin. And you can see now that's Edlin 2.19. So how do I get that into my system? Well, I actually could just do uh, a manual install. I could put it anywhere. If this was a, a third-party application, I might want to put it in its own directory. And in fact, maybe let's just do that. Let's go into uh, the, uh, the uh, root directory, and I'm going to create a new directory called Edlin. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to move uh, that uh, Edlin from the uh, temp directory. I'm going to put that in the Edlin directory. And so now if I go into the Edlin directory, and again, I just run Edlin, I'm running 2.19. To be able to run that anywhere, so if I just go back to the root, you notice if I go anywhere, you know, that temp directory or that actually Edlin directory isn't part of my path. So if I just type Edlin, it doesn't exist. I need to run the 16-bit uh, version that we have installed as part of FreeDOS. Uh, and it's not called Edlin, it's called Edlin 16. So uh, how do I run that version of Edlin 16? Well, I need to uh, add it to my path. And so you can see my path variable has a couple of things in it. And so let's go ahead and add Edlin uh, to that path. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to say uh, set path. And then um, I'm going to say, well, we'll use the current path that's in there now. So I'm going to expand that variable using these uh, percent marks on either side of the variable name. And then I'm going to tack on that, that uh, Edlin path at the end. So I'm going to do a semicolon, C colon, backslash, Edlin. And now from wherever I am, I can type Edlin, and it will run the version of Edlin that's under that C colon, backslash, Edlin. And so that's a quick way that you can install another application 
on FreeDOS, even if it's not something you can install through the FD Impulse program. So what do you think about that? Let me know in the comments below if there are other things you'd like me to show off. I'd be happy to do that. Before I go, let me uh, also thank everybody who supports me on Patreon. Thank you very much. You really do make this channel happen. Some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level, and I wanted to recognize you especially here. So thank you very much for that. Visit our website at freedos.org. Join us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. And consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.